So Marilyn, I wanted to talk to you um, about your publication, uh, Third Eye Gypsy. Um, tell me or, or tell the audience about that publication, um, why you started it, uh, uh, what topics it covers, um, and then we'll link it in the bio below. So anyone watching the video can check it out and possibly um, apply to become a writer for you. Okay. Um, the third eye gypsy is um, based on spirituality. Um, for and it's um, I'm not an overly religious person, but I'm very spiritual, and that goes back a lot of years. I would say, probably in my twenties, when I really started um, believing in angels. And that gets into a whole other um, thing that I'm going to be writing about, um, actual experiences and things that have helped me throughout my life. So when I uh, thought of this gypsy thing, I um, the prompting kind of just came to me, just like it does with my poetry. Words just kind of mm -hmm. popped into my head. So I started thinking about the third eye chakra. And um, like I said, I'm, I deal with chakras and meditation and I wanted to add something to it to make it kind of stand out. And the word gypsy came to mind. Now, for some people that that means a lot of like negative things when you go into history. And I have some family stories with that too. But I took on the natural meaning of the word gypsy, which is basically free traveler, yeah, free roamer. So when I added the two, the third eye being your your higher awareness and linking it with the gypsy, the person that roams free, it basically translates to freedom with enlightenment. And I thought, oh, what a wonderful idea. So I opened up the publication and it's probably been a few months. I really didn't know what I was going to do with it. Um, it's my first. I don't have, a, I'm still really learning. It's the early stages for me, but I found that um, writing about spirituality has really helped me just as a person heal from a lot of things that I've gone through. And for me, spirituality is everything from nature, um, angels. There's going to be some paranormal experiences that I've been through. It's a whole like box of things and most recently I decided I want to do something more so I opted to run a poetry contest for the new year based on basically writing a poem from the perspective of an angel giving you guidance for the new year wasn't expecting very much but I've had several people opt in to join the publication People are right. I'm really surprised by the outpour. And I've gone from a pub that's, you know, it's very small still. Gone from like 20 followers. Now I'm up to about 50. Right. And, and, you know, it's like I said, it's, it's beginning stage. I have a lot to do here. But I have ideas of where I'm going for the new year. And I'd like to see it grow. And I, and I think it's going to. So it's, it's kind of like I'm testing the waters, but I'm meeting new people that I have a lot in common with. So it's interesting. It's, it's interesting that you say it because I've had a few experiences myself, which I've I, I've written about, and some I haven't as yet. Um, but I remember when I wrote my first article um, about afterlife. I don't know spirits. I, let's say then. Um, yeah. Um, that, that was in my home. Um, from an early age uh in my in my parents house um we had a ghost um so what i found when i was in school and i spoke about that um people just thought it was weird basically um yeah. so i didn't really talk about it too much in adult life um and i find it easier writing sometimes than speaking um, because when you've written something down, you don't have to do anything with it. You just close your book and no one knows anything <laughs> different. You still got things off your chest. Um, do you think that people sometimes find it awkward or daunting 
talking about yeah. that side of their life yes i do and the thing is like you know i kind of debated on on it for a while especially like with some of the things that i have yet to, to tell because they're real life experiences and um I know for some people, that's kind of like a hush, hush, you don't talk about it, especially in my family, uh, certain things that have happened, uh, my, my mom especially would, would not want to discuss it. Mm -hmm. But then on the other side of that, there's a lot of people that can relate. And then when you put it out there, you, you're, you're going to get, you're going to get all kinds of responses. But for me, especially the first story that I really shared in the pub about my um, second daughter, an accident she had where she passed and yeah. they brought her back. And the fact that she's seen ghosts since she was a child, or she says spirits, she doesn't call them ghosts. I had a lot of response to that, you know, people saying, oh, you know, this has happened to me. And it, so I think, you know, it's maybe a bit of a controversial topic, so to speak. But then again, there's so much in the world that we do not understand. And I think there's a lot more people with stories to share. And uh, I'm just kind of expecting to see more and more of it. You know, I'm kind of opening the door for it, I guess. It was an absolutely fascinating story. Um, I was uh, definitely wowed by it. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll also link that in the description below yeah. as well because um, it's definitely something well worth reading and it kind of takes you to another level of thinking as well uh, yes. particularly for those maybe who don't necessarily uh, uh, believe in the spiritual world let's say um, and I think if you've never encountered it um, then I guess I understand scepticism to a degree um, but I guess if you have, there's, there's no doubt in your mind, you know, you can put right. it down to X, Y, or Z. But if you're there and you feel it, see it, hear it, the, 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 there is no doubt. Um, so I did have one experience. I won't talk about it now because this is all about yourself. But I did have one experience where I actually thought, did I, did I dream that? Yes. Um, <laughs> so um that's uh um yeah i've had quite a few experiences and, and i remember thinking that the one time and thinking am i am i crazy you know but then realizing well i might be crazy but this definitely happens so yeah it's really interesting um very 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 interesting you talked about um you know things that, that have happened in your life um right. and we spoke about stories earlier and um, looking back, the first story that, that you wrote um, was the seven Ds of domestic violence. Um, are you comfortable talking a little bit about that on camera, uh, Marilyn? Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, domestic violence, um, I've had very limited um, experiences with it. Um, I was in an abusive relationship where... Um, the well, my girlfriend at the time uh, was showing aggression and violence to me, uh, but I got out of that very, very quickly. And I'd say I was very fortunate to do so. Um, I know that um, many people uh, are not as fortunate and suffer many, many years of abuse. Um, so would you mind just sharing with us uh, your, your thoughts on that and, and, and possibly touched on, on the article that you wrote? Um, that article was one of my early ones too. And um, it came from, you know, personal experience, a uh, person who he's the, um, actually the father of my youngest two children. Um, we have no contact today. Um, the children do not speak. Uh, he lives in another state. He's married. But um, it wasn't so much a um, physical, uh, like beatings and stuff. It was um, emotional abuse that progressed. Um, very mind controlling. Um, but at its worst stage, I believe that if we did, if I did not leave, if I did not take the kids, I do not think that, I think there's a high possibility I might not be here today. And how it ended up is my youngest daughter 
when she was three, walked in on her father one evening, standing over me with a knife while I was sleeping. And now um, I discovered this knife the next day under his pillow. And she, she told me everything. I knew she was telling the truth. Within weeks, I was gone. I took four children and left the state. Now, the thing about that is um, for some years, I put that memory away. Um, what I mean is I, I actually did not recall it. Um, my daughter, we were all in therapy and we did not talk about it for, for years. It was, it was like as if it didn't happen. I've had severe PTSD, very anxious, I've, and just many things. But a few years ago, it kind of it came up. Well, she brought it up, but I had forgotten about it or blocked it until she had mentioned it. So I realized, okay, we need to talk about this. We need to um, deal with it. So it's like I reopened it up after years. And um, throughout this time it had gone by, their father um, opted, he wanted years later to be a part of their lives. Um, he had called my parents. So I allowed it. He had served in the army. Um, he was discharged. Uh, he almost lost his life in the army. And what I found by allowing him to get to know them is it, it's not what he wanted. He wanted to get to me. Yeah. So long story short, um, about a year ago, my children as adults confronted him about that night. And he said it was an implanted memory that it never happened. So from there, my children decided that this isn't going to work. And um, they cut off all communication. Um, I've had the same telephone number for years and um, I will not change it. And I can tell you that even within this last year, he has sent ranting text messages. Um, <clears throat> he hasn't changed, of course, you know, we didn't expect him to, but this is years and years of healing. And I think that by confronting him, that my youngest daughter, especially my son, can't remember he was a baby. She was able to kind of put it behind, in a sense, just knowing that she confronted them. She knows what happened. She remembers every detail. So when I wrote that article, I was like, it kind of just looked like snippets of my past kept coming back. And I just, it was something I had to get out there. So from a domestic abuse survivor, I feel like it's important to discuss it and to talk about it. And I haven't done it so much as, as of lately. It's Sometimes it's hard um, just going back through the memories, but there's been a lot of healing and that's where my poetry comes in too. So I have a very big empathetic side for people. And that also ties into why I like what is love to you so much. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot, that's a lot to take in. And, and yeah, my, my mom always said that my life is better than any movie. So I, I don't know about that. But, um, and I kind of keep that in mind when I write. There's many things for me to write about. I mean, everybody will have their own opinion on it. Um, I feel that maybe psychological uh, abuse can be equal if not worse than than physical uh, yes. because i guess you know bruises something broken like, like, like an arm as an example uh, which uh, that is incredibly uncalled for um but mental abuse um isn't something that might heal um, yes so Oh, you know, it's... <laughs> he was a very cunning person because he, yeah. uh, you know, served in the military. He had this um, reputation of such a great worker, but behind closed doors, it was different. And Definitely. yeah, very much so. But I saw more and more of the ugly at the tail end. It was inching and inching. And I can tell you, it was getting to a point where he was having these violent outbursts 
but it wouldn't hit me, but it would hit walls. It would hit things around me. So, you know, it was all coming. Yeah. You know, and um, but I was determined and we, we got away. I got away. That was that was it. I, I, I love it. I'm pleased you did for yourself, obviously, and for your children as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it astonishes me that given all this time, based on what you've told me, he still hasn't let go and and even trying to yeah. mend relationships with his kids to try and get to you as well. Um, I, I, I pity his wife, really. I hope she's not going through it as well. No one deserves to go through it. Um, well, you know, I've always, I'd always believe, you know, and, and he came from a, uh, abusive background too so it's kind of like you know some repetitions and things going there but um I don't think that uh, I can only imagine I just um he's like two people so I don't think that um everything's roses and daisies there either but I just know that um from what we can see that the goal it wasn't even the children it was just to get to me um you know and we've cut our ties and I'm, I will not change my phone number. Um, and I've thought about, you know, what if he discovered my writing online and, and, and stuff like that, but I haven't, I try not to worry about that stuff. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that nobody watching this is, is going through that type of experience. The sad case is that probably somebody will be uh, that, that, that's watching this video now. So I hope they draw strength from, from, the incredible story you've just told in a few minutes and you could probably speak for hours about it, but thank you for opening up because, um, you know, it, um, your courage to, to speak about it, um, is an, another example of, uh, people fighting from within, uh, to stand up what's right for them and their family and, and being able to get out of it. Um, I can't imagine how hard that would have been and, I guess you may have, I know you said you got out of it quite quickly after that particular night, um, but even then, it's um, it takes a lot of guts and determination and courage to do it. So um, I, I, I'm obviously pleased that, that you did, and thank you for opening yes. it up. Sure. And I hope, uh, you know, um, anybody is that hears this, I have, that knows, you know, because I feel like everybody knows somebody. Or it might be somebody you least expect. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, there is help. There's there is help out there. Mm. Yeah, that well, was very well said. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, let's try and turn our attention to something um, a little bit more light-hearted. Um, the shy guy. Um, I, uh, you raise a smile then. <laughs> Uh, the Shy Guy was actually the first article that you wrote. Uh, actually, it wasn't an article, it was a poem. Uh, for What Is Love To You. Do you remember that one? I, I do. I remember the title. I just don't remember what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I, uh, you know, yeah, a little bit naughty, really. I've obviously done a little bit of uh, digging. Um, and I, I for, for anybody future in these conversations, I, I tend to go back and look at, you know, when you started on the platform and your first couple of articles and things like that. So, uh, okay, all right, we'll, we'll move on from the shy guy. I thought there was going to be some th- sort of um, uh, true, true to life story on that one, but uh, obviously I'm a little bit way, uh, way of the mark, <laughs> so to speak. Um, where do you get your inspiration from to write? So, um Poetry, I know, comes from the heart, comes from love, comes comes from um, a past, let's say. Um, but your everyday type of writing, where do you get your inspiration from to put pen to paper or, or fingers to keyboard, if you like? It, it varies. It could be, I'm one of those people, sometimes just a word will pop into my head. Just a word or a phrase, and I'll sit there back or it might nag at me it might stay at me I, I i keep notes i'll write things down i have pieces of paper everywhere um sometimes like an article will come just from a word that pops into my head or a poem um sometimes it's stuff you know past experiences or just a feeling that i'm going through um sometimes silly um moments with my two-year-old grandson will you know bring on things um 
even just daily observations, I might see something. I'm, I'm a people watcher. I like to I watch. Um, it I just say. it could be it could be really almost anything, and, and sometimes it surprises me. Like so, especially with my poetry, like a word by just like oh, you know, and I'll go with it. But um, yeah, it just and sometimes prompts. I'll go with prompts um, offered by other writers on, on Medium. But a lot of times things just kind of pop into my head. It's that over a active imagination yeah yeah of course how long do you spend thinking about titles do you tend to just go with the first one that you think of do you do you write a few down do you ever change a title after you've or whilst it's in draft mode and about to publish it i'll um sometimes one will stand out and that'll be it i'll go right to the keyboard and that's it other times if i'm not sure i'll make a list I might shuffle them around, shuffle wording around, see how it sounds. There's been a couple of times when I've done a title and I've been halfway through an article and I'm like, no, I don't like this, you know, and I'll go back and something else will fit just, you know, a little bit better. Right. But, so do you, do you write a title first or the article first? Usually first. Wow. Usually, okay. my, title, usually my title comes right away. Okay. I'll have the story, but I'm like, I got, you know, my title. Yeah. Uh, there's sometimes, though, the title doesn't stick, or I might be in the process of writing and something else will pop into my head and I'm like, oh, that sounds better or it fits better. And then I'll go back and change it. But I do tend to um, keep lists and I will work them out by hand. Sometimes I'll write the um, titles out by hand and maybe I'll shuffle words around or try a few different styles before I find something. And what about the picture that you had? Um, there might be a few, but I, I obviously you create a, a, a or uh, bring in a, a picture for the uh, article itself. Yeah. Um, do you put a lot of thought into that? Yes, do I do. You? Okay, okay. Yes, so I do. So what, um, what's, what's your process in deciding the picture? Well, for poetry, I tend to, I like um, very creative, like spiritual pictures, artsy, I something see, yeah. very, very different. Um, I'm drawn to spiritual art, um, just stuff that kind of it really makes you look at it to find a connection to the words. <laughs> but whenever I do choose a picture, I will scroll through and scroll through until something kind of I connect to the picture through the words that I'm trying to convey. I try to make the picture really reflect what I'm trying to say, if that makes sense. And Canva has become a big friend of mine. Ah, I like Canva. like Canva design. I do. Yeah, I I I've used Canva. Um, I've actually switched across to Vista Create, um, but but I did use Canva at the start, and yes, it's 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 really really good. Um, I just find that Vista Create gives you a little bit more option. Um, I tend to use that for my YouTube thumbnails actually more than anything else. But uh, but yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting um, that you go back to your spiritual side when when thinking about pictures as well. <laughs> this might be a really silly question, but um, do you draw at all? <laughs> I kind of suck at drawing. Do you? Well, I say that because obviously you're very creative. Um, and when I, I think of somebody who's spiritual, um, I used to. I just have this vision of them drawing. It's funny that you mentioned that because, and I drew a lot in high school. And I'm sure if I sat down and practiced, I could do, I've, and it's always in the back of my mind that I should uh, get, give it a, another try. It's funny that you should mention it, but like right now, I, I couldn't really draw too much. I mean, at least, it's, I think it's because I'm out of practice. Yeah, I draw stick men, and that, that, that's me done. Yeah. Obviously, I, I recently had a conversation with David B. Clear, who does all his own cartoons, and I, I found that very inspiring. Uh, the sort of uh, work that he produces, but I said that vision then, you know, somebody spiritual, you know, very creative, already paint to draw. So I didn't know that for definite, but no, I, I'm I'm completely hopeless at, uh, at drawing. 
um i'm not much better right saying that but um yeah just that i thought i'd ask what you were going to say i will say because one of my newest things now is i've um, self-published a couple of children's books on uh, amazon yeah and on canva <clears throat> i do my own illustrations you know with um all the options that you have yeah. and i really love that so but as far as freehand drawing, I need more practice. I think. Okay, no, uh, that's that's good. Um, you mentioned Amazon, and you mentioned your books. What I'd like to do as well is link all your profiles down below. So, if only if you want to, if you wanted to share your Amazon or your coffee page or any other social media platforms that you're on, we'll definitely link those down below. The more people that can see your work, um, the better. So, so fantastic, um. Putting aside your publication and putting aside our publication, let's say, um, what's your favorite publication that you like writing for? Oh no, <laughs> um, I like Illumination, although I haven't had any, done anything there lately. Mm -hmm. Um, Be Open is one of my earlier ones and I haven't written anything there for a while but I've been thinking about it and um, they make me feel <clears throat> very welcome when I first came on Medium um, I think if I'm saying it's like Shane a Abrams is the owner of that one I, I like that one too but um, one that I really like that I've been accepted to that I'm procrastinating on is the writing cooperative. Oh, they're fantastic. Yeah, we're just, um, just in contact. I was accepted a few months ago, but I haven't uh, haven't done anything yet. I think I need to get on that one. Yeah, I've had a really good experience, the writing cooperative. Um, I've written four articles for them. Uh, they've accepted three and rejected one um and uh all three articles that were accepted have, have, have done fairly well it did expose me a little bit i got exposed to other people and i did have uh an increase in, in following uh which is good um i because obviously they're all about writing and i don't yeah. find it that easy to write about writing um so yeah, I mean, the three that's gone in have, have been a, all a bit of a twist. Um, I remember the one being um, is uh, is type of the new writing, suggesting that there aren't writers anymore with typists. Um, right. And I, it was quite a controversial one that Justin liked. Um, and I had a lot of comments, uh, which, which was quite good. So... I think all three pieces that he's accepted have been slightly controversial towards writing. Um, so maybe, maybe maybe he's looking for a bit of a, not an argument <laughs> as such, but looking for something a little bit different. Um, but I, I definitely encourage you to do that. Um, I do find it a little bit hard to come up with the topics for it. But uh, I he, think that's he's really, um, really good. A good challenge for me. I think I need to do that. And I, I'm going to. One thing I will say about the writing cooperative, and I've started to do it a little bit on on you writers welcome, is when I submit an article, Justin normally takes about two days to come back to me with right. any feedback or accepting it. And if he does accept it, you're normally waiting for ten to twelve days for it to be published. He'll tell you he'll say this is the date it's going to be published on. I'm like, what? That's like two weeks time. Yeah, so, I remember that. He yeah. Told me that. Yes. So um, uh, when I went on my writing course with Sinan, one of the things she said is don't stop writing because you submit to publications. Uh, I'm assuming she only writes for massive publications. Uh, and if you're waiting to get a response from them, you're going to be wasting time. So just constantly write, right. write, write, write and churn out these articles and when they're accepted and when they go in, they go in. Um, so that's something I, I, I took, one of the things I took from her course. Um, so yeah, have you ever taken a writing course before? I just done. Uh, I did Christina's boot camp. Of course you did. Sorry, I knew that. Yes, of course. And yeah. that my um my top writers badges came within a month after taking Brilliant. her course. 
that was a life changer for me. Mm -hmm. So I'll always be grateful for that. I haven't taken anything else. Um, sometimes I think I might do that in the new year. I'm just not really sure where. Yeah, I, I forgot about uh, Christina's course. Yeah, I think she's um, she's done really well with that. Um, and I'm really pleased that that you you took a lot from it. Um, because I am not a writer by trait, I felt that I needed something. Um, I thought it really, really helped me, and I, I, I believe it has. So I'm glad that that kind of you, you feel yeah. that as well. That's brilliant. Okay.